My name is Michael LaRousse, Sergeant with the Oklahoma City Police Department. 25 years ago, I had 13 years on. I was assigned to second shift patrol and I was actually light duty. I was uh, recovering from an injury and at home. And my wife actually, uh, she came in and woke me up and said, there's been an explosion downtown Oklahoma City. And they're talking that it may be a gas leak. And she goes, I felt it. And uh, so I woke up and ran downstairs. We started watching TV. And it became apparent that as time was going on, that this may have been an actual terrorist uh, attack. So I threw on a bulletproof vest, a shirt, pants. I had a badge around my neck, got my gun, and got in my personal vehicle because, again, I was on light duty. And so I made a quick call to Will Rogers Division and asked how I could help. And they said, well, the command post, and they told me where the command post was set up. And so my idea was actually coming to the command post and helping them since I was light duty, but it kept moving. So I parked my car a few blocks to the north and uh, to the uh, uh, west, got out and started making my way down towards the building. I was just compelled to because I could see the smoke rising and it honed out in the, in the center. So as I was making my way here, I actually ended up right here at uh, Fifth and Harvey. Now the strange thing was I did not know because I had no way of communication, they weren't putting it over the radio, but a second device was found. And when it was found, the rescue workers, the firemen, and, and everything had ran north and over towards Broadway. Well, just behind them, here I come at this intersection, and I'm standing here looking at the damage to the Murrah building, empty fire trucks with the ladders extended, papers are still, still floating down, and for a moment, I'm, I'm trying to reconcile this in my mind where there's no one here there. It had happened just about an hour prior. So as I was thinking, there's no way that this has been locked down a crime scene like this, not this early. And about that time, a couple of officers were just to the north behind a building, yelled over to me and they said, LaRousse, they go, they found a second device in there, a second bomb. And so I made it back over there. We were standing around and we were talking and probably 15, 20 minutes went by and we're thinking, someone's got to verify what that was. Nothing's gone off I said, because we knew people were still in there. So I and a group of officers started making our way back over here. And about that time, I started seeing some federal agents, FBI, ATF, guys with their jackets on. And we actually made our way over to the courtyard and the stairwell was still intact over here. Uh, you know, the stairwell just right over here by Harvey. And we made our way up with some ATF agents up to the ninth floor because they wanted to see if there was any of their people in there. And when we came out, I'm standing and looking at this huge opening a panoramic view looking to the north of Oklahoma City and it's and so much of the furniture had been blown back actually uh, behind me to the south and they were checking and they didn't find anyone so I made my way back down to the courtyard found a couple other Oklahoma City police officers and uh, we're, we found a hole in the back there was just no way of getting into the building but we crawled through a hole and got into what, what would be described as the pit where uh, the daycare where some floors had fallen on top of it. So we just started digging and we were digging and digging and more people showed up, more Oklahoma City police officers, civilians. That, that blew me away. How many Oklahomans showed up, not just neighbors, no uniforms, no protective gear, no radios, no equipment, no training. They just came in and they were digging with us. And it was so imperative to find people. We really weren't worried about crime scene and say we were just trying to help. And uh, I started seeing other agencies and we, we got to talk and I actually saw two green uniforms and apparently they were from Tulsa and they got the word that one of the supervisors said, Oklahoma City needs you guys. You guys get there as quick as you can, see I can help. 
So it was kind of a who's who of law enforcement in there. And uh, I, I, again, I, I can't stress what really hit me that day is Oklahomans run to the disaster and not away from it. And as I was seeing these people risking their lives, you know, we're sort of, pay, we're paid to do that. We're trained and professional and we've reconciled that in our mind. But to watch citizens come in here and risk their lives just to help other Oklahomans, it was, it was very humbling to see the bravery. Uh, you know, as, as time went on, I, I remember we had an admin radio and I, I found out only later that so many um, you know, tool companies and businesses with things just all poured in here. What do you need? And we had a special need for a saw. And I'm thinking, there's no way we can get this saw for this to cut this pipe so we can get an officer down, you know, because we heard some moaning down below and water dripping. And, you know, and I just, we described what we needed as best we could over the radio. And it was no more than 15 or 20 minutes. Some guy comes running in with the exact saw we needed. And it was just, I, you know, I'm thinking, how could that, you know, you couldn't plan any better for that. Uh, Brian Martin, one of our officers, he was very, you know, he's a smaller officer. We had a hole that an officer needed to go through. And I watched Brian and he, uh, you know, they go, oh, we need someone to get in there. And, and none of us could fit. He goes, just like that, he goes, I can go, I'll go. And so once we got the opening, we tied a cord or rope or something around him and we we're gonna lower him down. But I noticed that two, two uh, cement walls had come together and pinched a, a refrigerator that was obviously used on one of the floors. And it was kind of dangling there with the door. And we just didn't know what was gonna come down on our head or fall on us. And uh, we, we were mindful of it, but you know, people needed us. So we stayed in the building, we lowered him down, uh, we dug, we got some kids out. We did some that were very maimed and it was, it was horrible. I remember one kid that I, I, we wrapped up. We didn't want his parents to see him. And I picked him up and he was the, the height weight of my four year old at the time. And we took him in, and IMSA was right there. The ambulance people were right there. And we pushed him through and they took him. And uh, when it was all over, we, we refused to leave until we were replaced by firefighters. And so when they, uh, they started showing up and they started uh, relieving us, then that's when we started moving out of the building. We were there, you know, just until, until relieved. No one was gonna leave. Uh, finally, we were able to, or the building was secured, but I remember going home that night, you know, hugging my kids and everything, and specifically my son, who I picked up, and I couldn't help but think of that one child that uh, I had lifted up and taken over and put through the hole to the, to the rescue workers. So it was, it was quite a day. Uh, one, though, that I have to tell you, the theme here is this is the best city, the best state to have an event like this uh, because again, our people, they just run. They run to the disaster and not away from it. So very memorable uh, day, never forget it the rest of my life.